Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the house of the Lord. It's so good to be here. I'm so happy, so excited for tonight to get the opportunity to worship with all of you and with all of you that are watching from home. Welcome. Let's let's just gather and worship God with revelation, with passion today, because He is so good. His goodness is forever. His faithfulness is forever. Father, we come today to Your presence with open hearts, Father, with willing hearts to worship You, to honor You, Father. Have Your way in this place. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. As it is in heaven, it is in this place tonight. In Jesus' name, Amen. Hallelujah.
just bless the Lord tonight with your words. Just worship him. Tell him something beautiful. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Lord, we worship your name and we bless you, Father. We give you all the praise, Lord, creator of the universe, the rose of Sharon, the lily of the valley. We worship your name. The lion of the tribe of Judah, we worship your name glory honor power and majesty to your holy name lord yes. we worship you god we yes. worship you father yes. we worship you holy spirit we worship you jesus we worship you jesus we thank you for your word lord your word that says you will give us perfect peace to those whose minds are stayed on you your word that says that we should not focus on the things that are temporary but the things that are eternal lord we focus on you lord our eyes are stayed on you lord
the highest praise and hallelujah our God reigns over every circumstance hallelujah our God reigns and hallelujah our God reigns forever all my days hallelujah
Give the Lord a clap offering tonight. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Worship the Lord. Amen. You may be seated. I think I've discovered a new anthem for me. It is well. It is well with my soul. If you, if you start feeling depressed, you start feeling worried, you start thinking the whole world is going to the bad place in a hand basket, just say it is well with my soul. And you know why? If you keep your eyes on Jesus, we were seeing that tonight, talking about keeping, you know, give me vision. And I, I was listening to a preacher one, one day this week, I think, and he was talking about Peter when he walked on the water out to Jesus. And he said, most of the time, the preachers preached, they didn't, the Peter just stepped, a, just stepped out of the boat. He actually had to take a few steps to get there. Because he was keeping his eyes on Jesus. And once he took his eyes off Jesus, that's when he started to sink. But Jesus reached out and pulled him up. But you know, you do know that as soon as Pete, Jesus reached his hand out, Peter's eyes was instantly locked on Jesus. I can guarantee you. I can guarantee you. He said, that is my Lord and my Savior. And he's our Lord and I, our Savior. He will protect us from the waves of this world, from the things that are coming at us from every side. He is our Redeemer. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm excited. Jesus Christ is real, and he's alive today. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Marilyn, that was good tonight. I know it wasn't just Marilyn, but she, she was probably carrying the blunt of the... Uh, concern. <laughs> Amen. But it was really, worship is, is so good. Corporate worship is wonderful. Do you know it? It is. I just, I would rather worship with you guys than anybody I've ever known in my life. I'm not kidding. It's good. We got one really great and wondrous praise report. That's the only one on here. But Peter Cooper is in this world. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Pastor Amy had that baby boy, and I know she's really glad. She's relieved. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So I'm quite sure we probably still need to pray for him. And uh, I saw that somebody, wherever she's at, was had uh, trying to make a race for people to take them food because she's probably not up to cooking supper right now. Not yet. So I'm sure people are helping out. There she is, there's Jennifer. But anyway, thank you, Lord, for everybody loving everybody. We have such an awesome church. I'm not kidding you. Sometimes, sometimes I just almost get overwhelmed about the awesomeness, if that's a word, of the people that God has let me be around. Praise the name of the Lord. All right, we do have some prayer requests tonight. Janice Timon has asked for prayer for uh, Myra and Anna. Uh, they both are in severe back pain. Uh, we need to pray for the interve divine intervention and for the source of the pain to be corrected. This coming Monday, our Don Twitchell is going to have hip replacement surgery. Don, don't worry. God has got you in the palm of his hand. He is going to guide those surgeons' hands. They're going to, you're, you're going to be in la-la land as they wheel you down the road, the aisle to get there. And when you come back, you say, can I get up and run yet? It's going to be that good. God is going to take care of you. There'd be as little pain and just normal, just better than normal getting over this surgery. In the name of Jesus I speak that over you as a mighty word of blessing straight from the Lord. Amen. I feel it. Uh, the other day we got a call from uh, Tracy Stevens. Her and Wiley used to come here until they moved clear out to somewhere out by the woodlands. It's, I've been there. It's a long ways. But anyway, Wiley was at a Walmart somewhere out there. And uh, he went down to the floor and passed out. 
Anyway, they didn't know what had happened. They thought maybe he had a stroke or whatever. Uh, they don't know exactly what it was, but he's, uh, he had a pacemaker put in. And so now at least he's got a good, steady, solid pulse, and he's home now, and he's doing good. And God is going to continue to take care of Wiley and make him completely and 100% whole. Uh, Brian Ingram has requested prayer for his grandma. Uh, Mike Hawkins asked prayer for a friend of his. She had a stroke last Wednesday night. Her name is Diane Mays. Uh, Marilyn Stringer reported that Jeff Churchill was released from the hospital. He's going to be off work for another two weeks, and they need help. I'm, he hasn't worked in many, many weeks, so I'm quite sure that that's true. Uh, Pam Porter asked that we pray for her former pastor's wife. Uh, she has uh, COVID. Her name is Lynn, and also play, pray for Lynn's husband, Mike. Joy Grader's niece, Alyssa, has severe COVID symptoms and had to relapse this week. Also pray for uh, Theresa Hinsky for anxiety attacks. And Satan is certainly attacking the whole general public trying to desperately hard trying to attack them with anxiety attacks praise god i know right now i'm not one of them praise the lord <laughs> amen let's let's uh, stand up so we can pray for these needs tonight lord we thank you lord god we thank you for the safe, safe arrival of little peter that he's made it here lord and for the a, a good delivery and, Father, we pray for these requests tonight, uh, for the Myrna and Aunt Myra, Myra and Anna, that their back pain be healed. And, Father, I pray that you be with Don Twitchell when she has his hip replacement this coming Monday morning, that the surgery is going to go smoothly, and it will be a miraculous quick recovery. And I just know, Lord God, that you are in charge. Lord, I thank you, God, that you have took care of Wiley. Lord, the pacemaker's been installed, that he's, he's doing better, his heart is beating regular. And Lord, I pray, God, that he would completely be healed. God, I pray for Brian's grandmother. Lord, whatever her illness is, that she would be healed. And God, I pray, God, for uh, Diane Mays, that she would be healed of the stroke. And Lord, I thank you, Lord God, that you are healing Jeff Churchill. Lord, I pray, God, that you would give... Uh, that family, all the help that they need, Lord, I know they've got to be in a desperate situation. And, Lord, I pray, God, for this uh, uh, pastor's wife. Her name is Lynn, and for her husband, Mike. God, I pray, Lord God, that you would heal them, make them 100% whole. And the same goes for Alyssa, for Joy's niece. God, we pray, God, that they would all be healed. And, Lord, I pray, God, for... Uh, the anxiety attacks, Lord God, that uh, Theresa Hinsky is having, Lord, and for just for everyone in general, Lord God, for everybody that's in, that can hear my voice right now here in this building and over the airwaves, Lord God, on the, uh, the service that's being broadcast. Father, we pray, God, that, that all of us would put our trust in you, Lord, to put our eyes on Jesus that we would not take our eyes off you and we would know that we are okay because we are in the palm of your hand, Lord. Thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. It's offering time. If you, if you need an offering envelope, just raise your hand. The ushers will be glad to give you one. I want to welcome you here on this wonderful Wednesday night. Those of you who are giving online, use our website and church app. In your giving, as you prepare your offering, I want to go to uh, Scripture, Matthew chapter 13, verse 8. And this is Jesus talking. He says, but other fell on good ground and brought forth fruit, some hundredfold, some sixtyfold, and some thirtyfold. I just want to say this. When you plant your seed or your money into the Ark Fellowship, you planted it on good ground. Say amen to that. Uh, I've been going to this church, uh, I don't know how many years now, but I tell you what, 
this is the best church in the world. I mean, <laughs> Pastor Goodluck and Pastor Angela, they excellent people. People of integrity who love the Lord. And I just want to thank them. This church got awesome, awesome teachers and preachers. Awesome praise team. You can't get that everywhere. This is a blessing. And I just want to let you know, as you give tonight, you're planting in good ground. The gospel is being preached here. The true gospel is being preached here. You can't come here on Wednesday night and at every church and just get the word every good Wednesday. Pastor Larry last week, awesome, awesome message. I mean, it's just a blessing to uh, be connected to a place like this. So I just want to say that as you uh, worship God tonight, just worship him for all the goodness that he gives through the gospel preached here at the Ark Fellowship. Stand to your feet. Lord, I worship you with my tithe and my offering. I thank you for bringing me out of bondage into blessings. I believe I'm now free from poverty and lack. Everything I put my hands to prospers. Satan, take your hands off my finances. Lord, let the ministering spirits be released. Let them gather in my harvest now. In Jesus' name, amen. May God bless you and your giving tonight. Well, good evening. I love the worship time here. And Sunday was no exception. Watching people dance back and forth. Oh, my goodness. Outpouring of the Holy Spirit. There was a visitor, and I laughed because halfway through pastor's sermon, he was talking about the people who come in like this, and then they're like this, and then they're like this. And that was this fellow. I was watching him as I was walking around, and he was just standing there like this, and he was praying for us. Uh, heathens, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> and halfway through, he was like this. And then at the end, he had his hands up like this. <laughs> I said, yes. <laughs> I said, of course, that's how it works. That's how it works. So, Father God, we just thank you for the opportunity to go into your word. Lord, we thank you for what you say to us. And Lord, I just pray tonight to be your words, not mine. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, as I was trying to figure out what I was going to do last week, Holy Spirit said abundance. I said, great. What else? <laughs> Nothing else. <laughs> I said, well, okay. So I put together a couple notes for the abundant life. And two days later, he said, I said abundance. <laughs> and that's the way the Holy Spirit works, and I love it. And the way it came out is just, is just great. So we're going to talk about abundance tonight, and we're going to talk about in six different areas, infilling of the Holy Spirit, obedience, favor, knowledge of the word, faith, and wisdom, abundance in each one of those. And I know there's abundance a lot in a lot of other places, but those are the ones he gave me for this week. And so I, as I was going through and, and trying to, just praying and filling out, I said, well, you know what we do? This is a fulfillment as a Christian. The first one is infilling of the Holy Spirit. And, of course, we repent, we, we uh, receive Christ, we're baptized. And some denominations, that's where it stops. They never get the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And I've often said, that's like becoming Christian 2.0, right? You get to that next level of, of, of understanding of where it's supposed to be. So that's what I wanted to talk about on abundance. We're so, we have, if we're a spirit-filled church, and most of the spirit-filled churches I've gone to, we have an abundance of the spirit. Like, and that's why I brought up the, the worship last week. There's an abundance of the spirit here. And I saw a gentleman who walked in that was very stiff walk out with the abundance of the Holy Spirit. And that's how it's supposed to go. That's how we're supposed to be. Just, and not just wild abandon, but worship. And worshiping the Holy Father. And the Holy Spirit and Jesus. So uh, infilling of the Holy Spirit is a natural part of, uh, of our progression, right? So in that abundance, in John 14, 15 through 17, but I'm only, I'm only going to read a couple, a little bit of it. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Jesus had commandments. 
And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever, 17 says, the spirit of truth. And we pray that in the mornings. I say, Lord, just release your spirit of truth on this nation, on our president, on Congress, on on everyone who needs to hear the truth, God, release your spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. This is what Jesus is telling us, telling his disciples, but he's telling us. So in Acts, after the resurrection, Acts 1, 4, he says on one occasion, well, now he says on one occasion, he was with them for 40 days, went to see about 500 people. I've actually heard preachers say, well, he was only here for a couple of days. He was here for 40 days and he saw about 500 people and he walked and he talked and he taught people. And on this one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, another one. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for my gift, my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. And in, in, in the disciples' defense, they did not know what he's talking about yet. But they believed it. And they were going to wait for it. And so when, when the Pentecost came, and, and we know the story, I'm not going to go through all of that, that when, when Peter, who had been, I'm not going to say in trouble a lot, but he, he made a few mistakes, and Jesus corrected him. And, but very faithful man, a simple fisherman, after he received the Holy Spirit, he gave the most amazing speech, quoting Joel, brought 3,000 or more people to Christ that day, and baptized in the Holy Spirit. That's an abundance of the Holy Spirit. And that's what we should seek. That's what we should pray for. That's what we need to have. In Romans eight fourteen, for as many are, as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. That's pretty clear to me. If you're led by the Spirit, you're a son of God. I didn't say that. That's what it says in the Scripture. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again into fear, which is what we had. We feared everything. But you received the spirit of adoption. By whom we cry out, Abba, Father. Listen to this. 16, the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Now, I know we've read these words a lot, but we've got to put them way down deep. We've got to meditate on them. We've got to think about that. We are a child of God. Kathy and I were talking the other night, and it just hit me. It said, when Jesus said, I only say what my father tells me to say. I only do what my father tells me to do. He didn't just say that so that we would know that was Jesus. Every other thing he said in the Bible was for us to emulate. I'm only supposed to say what the father tells me to say. I'm only supposed to do what the father tells me to do. That was the example of what we're supposed to act our life out like. Make sense? So when we have that abundance of the Holy Spirit and we have the helper talking to us daily and I found out over the last few years that while I'm praying and talking I can't hear him very well I have to be quiet I have to hear that, that, that still voice especially if you've asked a very serious question and in jest I've told people this before that sometimes I've gone to God and said I think you got this one wrong <laughs> you need to explain it to me and of course I have it wrong and he does and he explains it that's what the abundance is and if children, then heirs. What is an heir? Someone who's going to inherit all the treasures. All the treasures. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him. Well, when we go through that infilling of the Holy Spirit and we follow that word, we have to go into obedience. And that's the second thing. With obedience, we get blessings. And it says so in Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 28. And I've got... You know, Larry's made fun of me before, but I have two if-thens tonight. <laughs> but it's the truth. This is what, what Jesus always said and what God always said. Deuteronomy 28, and I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'm just going to read one and two. Now it shall come to pass, if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God, to observe carefully all his commandments. Jesus gave us what? Commandments. 
which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth, and all these blessings will come upon you and overtake you, because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Now, we've heard all that. But what it is, is where we live, that blessing. It's going to be our work, our possessions. Those are our, that's going to be when we're obedient and we're doing what we're supposed to do, we have an abundance of blessings from the obedience. So we have not just an abundance of the Holy Spirit, now we have abundance of blessings because we're doing what God said to do according to his commandments. Our food and our supplies, and it lists about 15 verses there. We will be holy people. People will see us as godly people. We'll have a lot of favor. He will open the heavens and treasures. And that's what's written in, in, in Deuteronomy 28. We will be the head and not the tail. And we've heard that a lot. But that's from abundance of obedience. We get abundance of blessing. And, and my, one of my favorites, and I start all the men's group with this in Second Chronicles 7.14. But I'm going to go with this a little different tonight. If my people who are called by name, which would be us... Heirs of Christ, joint heirs, sons, Abba Father, adopted sons, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and I'll forgive their sin and will heal their land. What that's saying is we want the blessings. The obedient part is we have to pray. We have to repent and we have to meditate on the word. Not just for 15 minutes on Sunday, daily. And as part of your daily life, you have to pray, you have to repent, and you have to meditate on the Word. When you're going to meditate on the Word, that means you actually read it, right? And that's why pastor has said, let's do it together as a church. Let's read First and Second Samuel together. Then we're going to go to Joshua. But he's only given us two chapters a week. We can do that. We can do that. And we're doing that together in unity, even more powerful, even more into the blessings. I love that. So when you have the obedience, guess what follows from there? Favor. And this is, this is what this, this is about tonight. The favor of God is without limitation. This is truly abundant favor. We need to confess God's favor over our lives Declaring a biblical truth with our mouth is a spiritual exercise. Say it again. Declaring a biblical truth with our mouth is a spiritual exercise, and it's in agreement with the divine truth that's written. It's a lot to think about, but that's what's happening in prayer. We don't need to pray magnificent, eloquent prayers. You know, it's, that's, and I hear that sometimes, and, that, and that's for man's ears to hear. You know, that does sound good, and it's very eloquent. God hears our words, but he has promised that when we pray his words, he will hear us and perform. That's what it said in Second Chronicles there. The words of our mouth are powerful. We know that in, from Proverbs. So repeat verbally the blessings that God has promised you. In Hebrews 4.12, for the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to the dividing of the soul and spirit. We've all heard that a lot. That's why we're supposed to pray his word. My words can be beautiful. My words can be eloquent. My words can be, but when I pray his words, his words are alive and active and sharper than any double-edged sword. It's going to cut straight to the problem, whatever it is. Straight to the blessing. Straight to the, the problem. Straight to the, to the answering of, of the questions. It judges, here's the good, it judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. So when I pray his word, you know, we can't cover up anything we're praying to the Lord. Lord, you know it wasn't my fault. <laughs> and we make excuses and we say, but, you know, the Holy Spirit is, is so much, so much more direct to judge our heart and our thoughts. And when we pray his word, 
when we get on our knees, we humble ourselves and we pray. We pray for our healing. We pray for repentance. Man, he goes straight. He starts answering the question. Nothing in creation is hidden from God's sight. Nothing. Everything is uncovered and bare before the eyes of him who we must give account. So, if anything, I'm going to say, if you want favor from God without limitation, pray the written word. Pray Psalm 123. I mean, 23. Pray Psalm 103, 51, 64. Those were written by David, prompted by the Holy Spirit. Now, there's other, other verses that we can pray, and, and there's you know, too many to go into. But think about what favor can do. Favor from God is a seed that can be sown. So I can go show favor to other people. And I can show favor to people who don't deserve it. And I can show favor to the homeless guy or the, the guy sitting at the, on, the, on the bench in the park. Or the, or the guy, we were walking one day and there's a fellow sitting in a wheelchair by the closed gate from the old folks home. So the Holy Spirit said, go, go talk to him. I turned around and introduced myself. And he was all by himself. And we, we talked to him for a little while. We haven't been able to talk to him since. But we were able to plant some seeds with him. Because it was something we could do that was favor for us. Favor for him. Favor can change a medical report. Right? It can, you can get a bad medical report and you can humble yourself, pray, ask God for favor. And they're going to come back and say, you know that thing we thought we saw is gone. How many times have we heard that? We've heard that a lot, haven't we? Or you can have a heart attack and then say, you don't know. And, and you pray favor and you go home the next day. That's favor. What pastor's just gone through, favor. He just, he, a lot of prayers went over that man. And man has a lot of favor. Favor can determine your level of income, your blessings. Now here's how you do it. You confess favor with your mouth like we're talking about. The words of our mouth are so powerful. I say, Lord, I confess favor over my, my work. I confess favor over my family, over my wife, over my marriage, over my grandchildren, over my children. Whatever you want fa to receive favor on, start confessing that with your mouth. Say it out loud so you can hear it with your own ear. As you confess that favor, it's going to come to pass. God is, God is a, a, a promise keeper. Our dealings with other people. And, and I'm not going to say people are difficult to deal with, but if you're not in church and you're out there in the world, they can be difficult to deal with. We can have hurt feelings in the church even. Now, guys don't get that so much, right? Yeah, we do. <laughs> but we can, have, we can have resolution of differences and form true unity in this body. With favor. That's all we have to do. Favor in your finances. Just praying the favor over it. Tithing like you're supposed to and, and, and praying favor over it. In Ephesians 3, 14 through 20, <clears throat> I'm going to skip down to 16. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. That's the same thing I was talking about a minute ago when we, when we have to declare the word of the God through power in his spirit so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that being rooted and established in love, 18, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and the deep depth of his love is. When we start reading these kind of words and we pray those kind of words, we come to know 19 and to know this love that surpasses knowledge that we may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Let's say that again. That you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. I can't even comprehend that. The fullness of God, to understand, it's written. Should I believe it? Absolutely, Yes. How many times do I have to pray that? To get it down into my heart, get it down into my spirit. That's favor. That's what we're going to pray when we say we want favor. 
we're going to pray stuff like that. Lord, give me the full measure of you, of the fullness of God. I want that. I'm praying for that. I'm not doing that just to be elitist. I want to know. You got to get hungry. You got to want to know. Tell me, Lord. Tell me. And it's so quiet sometimes, isn't it? When you start saying, God, I got to know. And then he tells you. Then that quiet, still voice comes to you and says, my son, here's, here's, here's what you need to know. And he'll give you a scripture. He'll give you a vision. I don't get, Kathy makes fun of me because uh, she has pro, uh, prophetic dreams. I have pathetic dreams. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I've, I've tried a couple of times to make them make sense. They don't. <laughs> but hers are prophetic. And I, I pay attention to that. I say, okay, tell me what it means, you know. Uh, but, but when we get to the point where we have the fullness of God, we're going to hear from him. But as I said before, there's some if-thens that go with that. If we follow the commandments, if we do what we're supposed to do, we let all the other things go, we repent, we get on our face, and we say, Lord, show me what I'm doing wrong. Show me what I'm doing right. Show me which direction to go that is right, and I'm going to keep doing that. And we don't have to, like I said before, we don't have to have the glorious prayer and the magnificent. In fact, you've got to be on your, on your face crying into the carpet. At least I do. <laughs> it's the way it works for me. So when we get to that point, what do we have? The next one is the knowledge of the word. Abundant knowledge. Abundant knowledge is including the gifts and the fruits of the Spirit. The actual words of the Bible are anointed by the Holy Spirit himself. Did you know that? And they, what? The actual words, they have the full ability to completely change and transform you if you're willing to work with the divine truths that are contained in the actual words. That's where we get, and that's where I say we, I say we as Christians, there are some denominations who take the actual words and say, These are my, this is my interpretation. And they form a denomination or they form a cult or they form something and that's exactly what the enemy wants him to do. Take the actual words and pervert them. Go back to the actual words and you can use the New King James, the Old King James, the Amplified, the NIV. I use them all just so I can get the full grasp of what the meaning is. I want the full knowledge of what that means. Jesus says in the Bible that you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. However, first you have to know what the real truth is, right? And that's where, that's where the Holy Spirit comes in. That's where the favor comes in. That's where the obedience comes in because we get to know it. In 14, John 14, 21. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. And he says before that, I am in my Father, my Father is in me, and we are in you. We read those words very quickly, and it becomes almost cliche, doesn't it? But think about what that means. Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit are inside of me? What am I doing? Why aren't I using it? Why, why, why can't I develop that? First, you have to know what the real truth is before the truth can start to work to set you free. In John 14, whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. All this I have spoken while still with you. 26, and here's what I want to get to. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and remind you of everything I have said to you. That's a very powerful statement. Think about it. That's what the Holy Spirit's job is, is to teach us, remind us of everything Jesus said while he's on the earth. I only say what my Father says. I only do what my Father tells me to do. He said that. That was for us. That's why it's recorded. All the parables, that's why they're recorded. The training manual we call the Gospels, that's for us. Not just the disciples. Not just for the first Christian church. 
And it's not so we can write some theological essays. It's to learn the words. Pray the words. Say the words. I will remind you of everything I have said to you. 1 Corinthians 2.16 For who has known the mind of Christ of the Lord that they, he may instruct him but we have the mind of Christ. It says it over and over and over and over again that we have the knowledge of the word. We have all of that. Therefore if any, in 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore if anyone is in Christ he is a new creation. Right? And we say that a lot. You remember when you were saved? If it was when you were a child, you probably don't. I remember when I was saved, when I stood up and I was so different. That all of a sudden I had a new spirit. I didn't know what it was. I didn't find out for years later what that was. Because nobody taught me that. When, we, when we're going to take this to the world, and we're going to very quickly here. We're going to go back to the jail ministry. We're going to do some outreaches. We're going to do some, a lot of youth uh, expansion. We've got to do a few things. We've got to first present the gospel. This is Christ. But we can't beat people over the head with the words. They've got to hear it right here. They've got to see it in our heart. They've got to want to know, who, why are you like that? I want to be like you. You've seen the guys in the jail. When they hear us talk and they say, I want to 20 and 30 guys at a time come to, come into the Lord. Those are the kind of things we want to see happening. Not just in the jail, out here. Have you been watching the news? Thousands of people flock into the rivers and to the beaches. New York City, Portland, Seattle, being baptized, praising God, receiving Christ, marching down the street. There is a revival going on. There's a revival going on. And of course, the news media is not going to report it. But man, it's just all over the country. People are hitting their knees in the middle of the street. I love it. That's the Holy Spirit. That's what, that's what our church is getting ready to do. That's what, we're, that's what we're in training for here. All of you are ministers. All of you are ministers. You wouldn't be attending on a Wednesday night after a tropical storm <laughs> if you weren't hungry for the word. Hungry to figure out what we're going to do. Hungry to know that when God says go, we'll be confident. We'll just go. We'll go talk. I know that there's a lot of inner healing that has to go on with men and women right now. Boy, there's been a lot of stuff that's happened since February. First of all, we were confused, scared. Christians aren't scared. We were concerned. <laughs> we weren't worried. We didn't have fear, but we stayed inside. <laughs> But we didn't know what was going on. And the government was no help. The news media was no help. For all we knew, this was the uh, bubonic plague, second coming, and all that. Good. The tribulation was getting ready to... And that happened for about three or four weeks before we all decided, okay, I'm just going to go outside. I don't care if I die. I know where I'm going. I'm going to heaven. And since that time, with the shutdowns and the stuff, we've seen a lot of things change. We've seen a lot of people who are depressed. We see a lot of people losing their businesses. We see a lot of people who don't understand that the fear that was, pro that, was, that was promulgated here was on purpose by the enemy. And the fear that, that, that people have, and, 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 I don't, and I'm not making fun of people because it's a true fear. When I see someone in a full hat and a face shield and a mask and gloves and a coat and they're going into the store, I just want to say, bless you. Poor thing. It's like this wave of fear coming off of them. You're not going to get anything. But with fear, you might. If you fear for something, will you get it? Faith for something. And I'm not talking just about the coronavirus. I'm talking about the things that we've happened, that, that we've seen happen. Depression, uh, people's financial problems right now. There's a lot of things that are going on right now that we need to stop and remember the Holy Spirit, whom the Father sent in Jesus' name, will teach us all things and remind us of everything he ever said. We've got to stand up, start speaking his word over every situation over everything that's going on. 
Is it still there? Yeah, but the fear has to go and the, and the, and the, and the grace and the faith have to take its place. First Corinthians six nineteen through 20. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you? Whom you have from God and you are not your own? For you were bought at a price. Therefore I glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Say that again. The temp- our body is the temple of where the Holy Spirit lives. That's what we did initially. We invited the Holy Spirit in. The Holy Spirit lives here. All I have to do is look at in fact, we canceled cable. We don't have any cable. I don't want to hear the news anymore. I look on the, I look on the, on the computer. But there's such bad news coming across every night, every day, everything. I don't want to hear that. I want to pray what we're going to do going forward. And we do that. We pray for other people. We pray for our family. We pray for our kids. We, we have a, a, a favor declaration page that we do every day, or try to every day. Because we have to say those words now. This is starting to come to the end of the, of the, of the mandated things. It's changed our society forever. Even when the masks come off, there's going to be people who wear masks. Even when, the, when, the, when this dies down, there's still going to be people full of fear. There's going to be people who lost loved ones, who need comforting. That's where we come in. That's what we're supposed to do. We're going to be the ministers that step up and do that. The very last two, faith and wisdom. Abundance of faith comes from all those other ones. When you have an infilling of the Holy Spirit and you have obedience and you have favor and you have knowledge of the word, faith should come easy, shouldn't it? Shouldn't it? Doesn't always. We let the world in. We let the things of the world come in. And, and thoughts. You know where fear starts? In our head. In our heart. And with thought will come and we'll start thinking about something. And pretty soon, and when we make the mistake, we verbalize it. We say it out loud. We can't do that. And so what we've learned is we just say, Holy Spirit, give me peace. And after a few minutes, it's gone. It works. When those ugly thoughts come, those fearful thoughts come, Holy Spirit, just give me peace. And you can pray some scriptures if you wish. If you're scared of of surgery coming up, give me peace. The Holy Spirit will give you peace. It works. It really does. Hebrews 11, 1 through 3. And we all know this one. I'm not even going to read the whole thing. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. For in, in verse 2, it says, For by it the el- elders obtained a good testimony. See, we always skip over that part. We, we know what the first sentence says. The faith is evidence of thing, a substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. But by it the elders obtained a good testimony. What we can obtain is a good testimony when we demonstrate our faith to people who need it. By saying, let's pray. And we pray in faith. We pray in the Holy Spirit. We pray in tongues over someone. We touch them and they're healed or they're, they receive peace. What did Christ say? Peace, I leave you. My peace, I leave you. He just didn't say peace and walk away like a hippie. You know, peace, brother. He said, my peace, I leave, I leave with you. That's Christ's peace. He had all the peace that the Holy Spirit could give. And he left that for us. And we laid it on the table. And we walk over here. Oh, what am I going to do? How am I going to do that? Pick up the peace that Christ left for us. It said in, in, in Philippians, peace will guard your mind and your heart. The peace of God will guard your mind and your heart. That didn't mean the situation goes away. That means the peace comes in. And you're able to think straight, pray straight, say what you're supposed to say, when you're supposed to say it. In verse 3, <clears throat> 11.3, Hebrews 11.3. By faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. God follows the same rules. He speaks the word out and things happen. Then creation happens. So that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. 
That's for us to understand. Now, let me go through that again. By faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word that God spoke, so that the things which are seen were made by things that are not visible. That means we can speak things into existence. We can't see it, but it's going to happen by faith, by knowledge, by favor, the abundance of obedience, the infilling of the Spirit. All those come together in one thing under faith. And we can start doing some things, some mighty works in the ministry. 1 Corinthians 2. My message and my preaching were not with wise and pers persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power. Paul knew this. He worked it. He knew how to work it. He knew how to speak it. It's a demonstration of the Spirit's power, not his words. He didn't have the Bible. He wrote it. But he knew what the Spirit's power was, just what God knew. So that your faith might not rest on human wisdom, but on God's power. That's the whole shooting match right there. We have to understand we have the mind of Christ. We have the fullness of God. We have an infilling of the Holy Spirit. We have the power, like he says in Ephesians, that incomparably great power that raised Christ from the dead is at our fingertips. Let's use it. Let's do it. Let's speak it. Let's walk it. We had a start on Sunday. Man, we saw the Holy Spirit running over here. It was great. I want to see that every Sunday. The last one is wisdom. And you've heard me say this before in the men's group. Wisdom is like experience is that thing you get right after you needed it, right? In Ephesians 1.15... For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your love for all of God's people, if I had not stopped giving thanks to your memory and you in my prayers, 17, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. Why is he writing that to the church at Ephesus? Because he knows they need that spirit of wisdom. And wisdom is just an accumulation of knowledge, what we were just talking about, faith and knowledge and favor. Think about it. Wisdom is when someone knows more than everybody else and they call them wise, right? And they go to them and say, tell us, old wise person, what should we do now? And that wise person who has made all those mistakes all those years can tell you, don't do it this way, do it this way. That's wisdom. And the same thing happens here. God's wisdom is revealed by the Spirit. Verse 6, we do, however, speak a message of wisdom among the mature, but not the wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. And he says that a couple of other ways in the Bible. It is foolishness for the people of this world. They do not have the advantage we have with an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And when we understand how this works, when we go through obedience and we get the favor and then we start getting the knowledge and we gain the faith and we gain the wisdom, there's not much we can't accomplish in God's name, in God's work. What we're seeing going to happen in Africa, what we're going to see happening with the, with the children's homes, what we see when we finally can get back over there and do some missionary work. I think Kathy and I would spend a month over there if we could just because we just love it so much, because those people are so hungry. You know what? We can do it here too. There's hungry people here too. There's people who are hurting. There's people who we need to reach out to. And it's happening on a daily basis. We're starting to see that happen. Pay attention to the people who, when you say, how are you doing? They go, I'm doing fine. Say, really? Tell me, what's fine mean? How are you doing? Well, you know, and they'll tell you. They'll tell you. Be prepared to answer them with the word, with the Holy Spirit. And you don't have to hit them with scripture. You don't have to thump them with the scripture. You can say, can I pray with you for a minute? And just let the Holy Spirit take hold of them. They're going to want to know more and more. How, how do you know all this? How, tell me more about your church. Tell me more about what you do. But you've got to have the courage to speak to them. Right? How many times have you been, has it happened to you in a store or someplace and Holy Spirit says, to go talk to that lady over there? You know, 
Uh, what if she says no? She says no, walk away. What if you get the chance to plant one seed, one favor? You know what? I was looking at you. I love your hair. That's not for me to say. That'd be for Kathy, of course. <laughs> but say, I, I love the. You know, I love your dress. I love whatever it is. With me, it'd be guys. Hey, man, how are you doing? How are you doing today? Ah, uh, you know, it's been, it's been a rough day. Really? What's going on? Start a conversation like you have to walk up and go, thus saith the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to be gone in a heartbeat. I got to go get my keys right here. But go on and just be, and be the real person that you're supposed to be, a good minister. It's called the Great Commission. Go forth into all the world, spread the gospel. Make disciples of all nations. Baptize them in the name of Jesus. You know, and, I, and there's a song that we play, but I wanted to say that, you know, the kingdom of God is living inside of us. All the tomorrows are living inside of us too. Think about that. What's going to happen tomorrow is living inside of you right now. Does that make sense? So we have to make it happen. We have to get up and say, God, what do you want me to do today? Who do you want me to talk to today? Maybe, uh, maybe me. <laughs> come on, come talk to me. Give us that opportunity, Father. Lord, we just thank you for your word. We thank you for the opportunity to come, to go spread your word, but more importantly, to do the, the heart transfers that you need us to do, that the people need to hear what your love is, that they have to see that in us, not just hear it from us. They have to see how we walk in that. Lord, give us that, that boldness to walk according to your word, to walk according to how you walked, and we'll do what, what you tell us to do, Father. Lord, I just pray for the Holy Spirit to just fall out on everybody in this, who's listening to this message tonight. Listen to the Holy Spirit. We thank you, Father. In your name we pray. Amen. Done. You're dismissed.